As a day one agent in Tom Clancy's The Division, I have been a part of this tumultuous adventure for over a year and a half, and as it seems that my beloved game is nearing the end of its lifespan, I decided to give this flawed masterpiece a thorough review and touch on what I felt went well and what did not. As in all of my reviews, I plan on not only offering up constructive criticisms for poor design choices or implementations of said choices, but alternatives to better enhance the overall build concept for this title. This will be the first video in this division improvement series and make sure to check back with my channel in the future for more updates and additions. What's going on, agents? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and as we take a look back at the last year and a half, we can see moments of extreme brilliance within the division, coupled with chapters of complete insanity and continual frustrations. Now, since I do not know what Ubisoft has in store for the division's future, I wanted to get my ideas out for everybody within the community to see and contribute to, in the hopes that it can be used as a building block to create a more complete and better functioning version of itself. In future episodes, I will be reviewing PvP, weapon design and balance, and update implementation and bug fixing, but I wanted to start with what I felt was the biggest portion of the game. So without wasting any further time, let's jump right into the PvE portion of The Division and begin this review. In my opinion, The Division was always to be a PvE-centric game on a much grander scale that looked to be heading towards a more story-driven concept and then lost its way and eventually settled into this partially finished product that had optional PvP thrown in towards the end of its development cycle. With a total of just 16 story missions before reaching the game's conclusion, it all just feels so damn incomplete. Each story mission tries to give us a little bit more plot and background as to what has happened in this post-pandemic New York, but it never reaches its full potential. And it is this lack of story development that directly clashes with what I thought to be the number one strongest element of The Division, and it has to be the world-crafting expertise of the art team and the way the Snowdrop engine makes it all such a beautiful reality. This alternate version of New York was superbly crafted down to the very smallest of details and has an extremely strong immersion effect. Everything that is incorporated into this environment, from the changing of day to night, periodic snowstorms, fog effects, level of details to the buildings, trash lining the streets, graffiti, and all manner of small creatures that scamper and fly around really contribute to the overall wow factor. And in this department, the Division really nails the concept with one of the most complete and overwhelmingly well-crafted environments I've seen in a video game. However, now that I am done praising the art and conceptual teams for their superb pixelated creations, it's time to discuss how this environment was incorrectly and incompletely incorporated into our gaming experience. Now to me, the vastness and beauty of the map is not fully utilized, and it seems that we are left to stay centrally located at the base of operations. After completing the necessary missions within a zone, we never have to revisit these superbly crafted areas, and it really feels as if we only need to use 40-50% to 50 of the available map to complete our necessary missions, as once an area is unlocked, a player can simply fast travel to save time. There is so much more environment that could be utilized and explored with more regularity, yet it seems that once we have progressed from those easier zones to higher difficulty areas, we are never required to return. The environment and level of detail that the art team has put into this game is in my opinion the strongest element of the game. Why wouldn't you want to engage and consistently re-engage a player into this environmental masterpiece? Now, to answer that question, we first need to look at the mission designs and how they incorporate the environment into the PvE aspect of the game. In my opinion, the division is far too easy when it comes down to completing the side missions and the game has an extremely dumbed down way of showing you exactly where to go and what needs to be done to meet the requirements for mission completion, much like a rail shooter. If all we are required to do is follow the diamond on the screen to the necessary checkpoints, it never forces us to use our own intelligence. We are never asked to use our own sense of direction or solve mission challenges or objectives, but instead told to move to this spot, 
eliminate this mob of NPCs, and then move on to the next checkpoint. I would have preferred to see missions with much less assistance. That really required me to use my intelligence to solve difficult navigational challenges, possibly search for clues to my next step, and even question civilians in the area or interrogate captured faction NPCs for information. The only missions that seemed to slightly challenge the player's intelligence were the virus scanner missions, and that you had to explore and listen for the machines in order to find them for activation within the necessary time limit. My point being, if all you require me to do is follow a diamond on the screen, and you never ask me to figure out challenges on my own while using clues from the environment around me, I can never fully appreciate the world you're trying to immerse me in. What I would have liked to have seen is a much more intense and less dumbed-down version of The Division that made extensive use of its number one feature, the environment. There are so many more programming options that could have been added to the PvE environment to really involve us into the game, lore, and overall immersion. For instance, the green poison itself. Up until the survival expansion, nearly eight months after the game's initial launch, we were never required to have to manage the effects of the virus. We never got sick ourselves or had to try and treat the side effects while roaming through the open world, and this was truly a wasted opportunity. It could have been so much more immersive if we could have experienced getting sick ourselves, trying to source medical supplies and more elaborate crafting materials to make better and better filters to protect us from the deadly green poison virus. In addition, I would have liked to have seen the Dark Zone require the highest filter level possible, and even then, it would not be able to keep you completely immune from the virus, forcing us to make shorter, timed runs into the Dark Zone. We are told through small story reveals that the Dark Zone was the hardest hit area of New York by the Green Poison, but once we have the necessary filter level, it never seems to have any adverse effects on us. Instead, we should be required to constantly check our contamination levels and balance farming NPCs versus time needed to extract loot and escape the Dark Zone before succumbing to the virus. In addition, the second most violent aspect of the environment is the weather, and it, like the green poison, is something that we are never forced to deal with. Dealing with constant sub-zero temperatures while battling NPCs could have added a whole nother level of realism. As we got colder and colder, our movement speeds could have reduced, and sight lines for spotting enemies could have shortened. Reload speeds could have gone up, and grenade lob distances could have reduced, all due to the adverse effects of the extreme cold. Now, some of these concepts were addressed with the survival expansion, but it is only in that game mode and should have been a core component of the game minute one of day one. The survival game mode is how I feel that the entire game should have been programmed, with players being forced to scrounge and forge for supplies and warmer clothing. It incorporates the virus as a core component of the game, and players are forced to manage all three, the virus, the weather, and the NPCs to reach their final goal of a clean extraction. And while we are on the topic of the core PvE experience, there was so much more potential for layers of complexity that were never installed into the game. Instead of showing the players exactly where to go via the checkpoint system, I would have liked to have seen a system that required us to use our intellect. We could have been required to look for clues, question civilians in the area, or even interrogate captured faction NPCs for information to the whereabouts of missing persons or property. I would have liked to have been required to follow tracks in the snow, or even use night vision or infrared equipment to track suspected terror threats or targets. A companion system through the befriending of civilians who after gradually becoming accustomed to your kindness would give you tips as to where to find known faction leaders or even if I could have taken in one of those stray dogs and used them to help track targets would have been a really nice addition to the game. The game lacks any semblance of a stealth system. We have no ability to do assassin style takedowns or to throw bladed objects and they merely serve as uniform decorations. The melee system needs to be completely reworked into something more realistic instead of the standard forearm shiver and should include punching, chokeholds, and submissions. 
giving us the ability to hack into computer terminals, closed circuit camera feeds, and use the internet would have added a much deeper level of involvement instead of the standard follow the diamond on the screen. Adding lockpicking and hacking into the game is badly needed and should involve a bit of skill and nerve. I would have liked to have seen a much more involved skill tree system, more like that of Skyrim, that allows us to spec heavily into different knowledge trees while sacrificing in others. Instead of dropping useless subpar weaponry, civilians could have given us clues as to where to find heavily armed NPCs or secret weapon caches that would require us to venture into heavily contaminated areas of the map where our virus filter could only do so much to protect us. Next, I would like to move from the open world to incursions, which started with Falcons Lost in Update 1.1, and we have seen the Clear Sky, Dragon's Nest, and Stolen Signal incursions added through the game's progression, and players have eagerly awaited the release of all of these in the hopes that they would push more towards the traditional raid style that many of us are used to. Sadly, all of these incursions have offered up little more than horde mode gameplay and have done little to challenge the player base other than swarming them with more and more heavily armed NPCs. So much more could have been done with incursions, including puzzles or problem solving portions that required all four players to perform their portion to complete the challenge. Longer map designs with multiple chambers and bosses could have been incorporated into these incursions and each boss could have their own unique combat mechanics to challenge players. Incursions could have been a test bed for new mechanics like a chamber that disables all skills and requires players to use nothing but their weaponry or a boss that can drain a player's health unless all four players stay within close proximity of a health beacon. Now I know that these concepts sound like a bit of a stretch, but I really feel like incursions could and should have presented the PvE minded players with much more challenge and reward than what we have received. And now we move on to Underground, which was introduced in Expansion 1 and was the Division's attempt at installing a dungeon grind into the game. Based on procedurally generated levels, much like Warframe, agents were thrust into the sewers and tunnels underneath New York to fend off attacks, eliminate named NPCs, and collect exclusive underground intel in the form of recordings. Now, unfortunately, Underground panned out as nothing more than a boorish dungeon grind that netted players with no more powerful loot than a standard daily mission, and players quickly lost interest and returned to their normal farming activities. Although I liked the portion of Underground that allowed the player to enable modifiers to up the difficulty of each mission, I found these missions to require me to set aside time and I had to force myself to try and complete these missions. Perhaps it was the fact that the map designs were extremely linear and required no thought or real tactics? All one needed to do was to eliminate all NPCs and then move on to the next chamber. Loot was few and far between and there were no real interesting mechanics to any of the missions or NPCs battlefield techniques. I would have liked to have seen a new and interesting NPC type with developed underground guerrilla fighting techniques including stealth and camouflage. Night vision and thermal vision could have been incorporated into the underground missions and I really believe the development team missed their opportunity to hit a home run with this expansion and instead played it far too safe. And finally, I feel it was a terrible design choice to place each PvE player on their own server instead of populated communal servers. The dynamics of a populated server in a PvE environment allow for community events as random players move in and out of specific areas. How cool would it have been to team up with other random agents to attack an LMB armored vehicle convoy or cleaner's garbage truck fitted with napalm containers? Instead, we are each individually assigned to our own PvE server, and it not only slows the pace of the combat down considerably, it further isolates us and the game is never really able to establish a true sense of community. What we are left with in the open world is roaming packs of NPCs that spawn in the same locations and can easily be defeated with minimal effort. Once properly geared, red and blue bar NPCs are laughable, and even the open world bosses can be steamrolled in short order. 
having communal servers and proper community events could have added much needed intensity and difficulty to roaming the open world and could have further engaged us into the strongest aspect of the division, the expertly crafted environment. Now, I know I have dropped quite a few criticisms towards the overall design concepts and implementations of those concepts into the division, but I have tried to offer up alternatives to a future incarnation of my beloved game. I've spent the past year and a half enjoying this game, but have been gradually accumulating my ideas for revisions, and I finally had a block of time to get them all recorded and out to you for review. As a quick reminder, these are just some of my ideas for taking the future incarnation of The Division to new and greater heights than our current game, and I look forward to reading your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. If you could take the time to rate the video with a huge thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. If you want some more Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and my Division content in your lives, make sure to pound that sub button and follow me on Twitter at Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer. And remember for my channel, likes, comments, subs are loved. Until my next The Division video, this has been Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer saying peace out.